Uh, otherwise, I'd love to hear some other mentors you had growing up. My mom's strongest message to me was how she lived. So it's 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 almost she never preached to me. She never preached to me. Um, for example, I'm not married, never married, and she never pressured me to be married. She she has six kids, and she knows knew she's passed now, um, gone on to be with the Lord. Um, so I would say mommy's um, strongest message to me was how she lived. But verbally, in short, she would say, encourage me to live for the Lord. She would encourage me to live for the Lord. I, I, as you can see, I have a PhD. It's, it's somewhat of an accomplishment in this world. That didn't even, my mom was proud of me, but that didn't even phase her. Like whenever I stand up to preach the word of God, that's when my mom's chests pop up. Yeah. She's the proudest. She was the proudest sitting in the front row when I preach. And it's like, it's, it was almost like she was the only one in the audience. That's I remember funny. that very clearly. Now, I remember when I published my first book, she was my runner. She, mama was my biggest cheerleader. So that's definitely one of, was one of my mentors. Another of my mentors, she's also passed on, was Evelyn Marshall, Pastor Evelyn Marshall. She was my spiritual mother, um, spoke life into me. She lived in Greenville, North Carolina. I live in Maryland. And if I had something going on, I would get in my car, drive six hours wow. and sit up all night long and talk to her. And she would speak life back into me. Yeah. So those were two very, very influential people in my life. Wow. Mm -hmm. So did Evelyn get you into preaching or how did you discover that? Mm -hmm. How did you come to preaching? So my late senior pastor, Samuel Carson. I the still Charmaine. remember. I like yes. Samuel. Yes. Samuel Carson. Uh, Sunday night service. He asked me to preach. Yep. I remember the sermon, the marriage relationship. And I preached that sermon Sunday night. And after the sermon, he said to me, say there, Sister Rosemary, you have something inside of you. I want you to preach that sermon on Sabbath. Uh, Sabbath keepers, the church is full at that time. And he made me preach again. And from then, I wasn't ordained at the time. He had me on the preaching rotation. And I was the first person in that first woman in that church, not ordained, that was put on the preaching rotation. Wow. So he helped me discover that gifting in me. Um, teaching, I believe, is more of my gift than preaching, but usually if you can teach, you can preach. Um, that, I almost want to say, comes natural. So I taught at a university for 25 years, give me teaching and I wake up. Um, so I taught in church, youth, young adults, adult. Um, so doors open up locally and in other assemblies. But Pastor Samuel Carson unlocked my gifting. That's really neat. Yes. It's interesting to hear you say, um, if you can teach, you can preach. Cause I'm curious, I don't know how far you want to go into this, but I've been kind of diving down the road of women pastors and, you know, there's a lot of churches that only allow women to teach, but they can't preach. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've gone down that road. Um, why is it like, what's, what's the, <laughs> What's the reasoning behind that, that a woman, you know, can teach, but then they're not allowed to preach? And I know that's a really mm -hmm. big rabbit hole. But if you want to speak to that, that's where I'm I, at right the, now. The, you know, the, the the quickest thing I can say to that is it's, it's a lack of understanding of the scriptures. Because when you teach, you're proclaiming the word. And when you preach, you're proclaiming the word. So if you can teach, why can't you preach? I've been in church before. <laughs> in a church before I traveled far to go there to minister and I'm ministering. And this is exactly what you're talking about. I'm a, you see, people distinguish teaching from pre preaching by the volume of your voice mm. and it, you know, how you say what you're saying, teaching, you're supposed to be quiet and calm, but when you preach, you you're louder, you're more exclamative. If they're emotional, if there's such a word. So I was in this church and I traveled. This was, I'm not going to say where, just in case, you know. Um, and they don't allow women preachers, mm -hmm. but he can teach. Exactly. And I am a passionate person. So even when I'm teaching, it borderlines what people consider preaching. But I'm teaching. Teaching is how deep you go in the concepts. Preaching is putting the concepts out there, keep moving. Mm -hmm. And the minute I started to 
go into what they think was preaching. Someone in the congregation got up and stopped me. Interesting. Yeah. Right I, there in, and it was a convention, stopped me right there. Women are not so you're preaching in the church. Women are not supposed to preach. Oh, yeah, but up until I shifted my mode of delivery, I was okay. How limited in understanding is that? <laughs> That's so interesting, yeah. uh, Rosemary, because I've never uh, I've never thought about it that way, where like you could stand up and you can teach, quote unquote, but if you shift the vehicle mm -hmm. in which mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. portraying, then it shifts. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. I don't know if mm -hmm. I've ever heard of a story like that. Very limited understanding. That's that's the that's the quickest way I can describe it. Yeah, no, that's mm -hmm. good. That makes a lot of sense. I, I love that. I'm going to keep that in mind. If you can teach, you can preach. I love yeah. that. I'm going to keep yeah. that going forward. Mm -hmm.